Zhenhua Li. Uh, Zhenhua is a uh, assistant professor at uh, Tsinghua University, China, and his research areas include uh, cloud computing and uh, mobile internet. Hi, everyone. In this talk, I will tell you some astonishing stories about the fake base stations as well as our long-term struggling experiences against the fake base stations. This is a joint work of Tsinghua University, Baidu Mobile Security, and so forth. This is outline of my presentation. First, let's look at the background with two stories. Story one. In last year's August, an 18-year-old girl entered a Chinese university as an undergraduate freshman. She came from a poor village, so she applied for a student loan. Several days later, she received a message from 95599. This is the official number of the Agriculture Bank of China. And the message says, we are processing your student loan you've applied for, and now requiring you to transfer a deposit of 9900 Chinese yuan, that is around 1500 US dollars, to a bank account. On receiving the message, the girl happily transferred almost all her savings to the designated bank account. Before long, she realized that the Agriculture Bank of China had never sent her any message, and thus she was cheated. A couple of days later, sadly, the girl died, simply because of deep sorrow and regret. Obviously, this is a tragedy, but not the only tragedy. Just a couple of days later, a professor working at Tsinghua University, yes, my colleague, was cheated again by a similar message. The message seemed to come from the Bank of China about a house mortgage. This time, the professor lost more than 17 million Chinese yuan, that is around 2.6 million US dollars. But uh, this, thankfully, this professor was very tough, so she didn't become a photo again. <laughs> Nowadays, cyber crime is pervasive, we all know. Meanwhile, we as people, we are getting much more alert than ever before. However, when the attacks are launched by certain entities that behave pretty like officials or authorities, then people can be easily deceived. Think that if you receive an acceptance letter from the official email of NDSS, then how could you imagine this is a fake email and uh, your paper is in fact rejected? <laughs> in, in the two stories, such entities are called fake base stations. Historically, fake base stations stem from a simple vulnerability of the 2G GSM protocol, where only fake base, station, only base stations can authenticate the user devices, but not vice versa. As a result, many companies have manufactured various types of fake base stations. In the very beginning, fake base stations are only used in military battlefields by the governments or used in counter-terrorist scenarios by law enforcement agencies. But as time goes by, fake base stations were gradually revealed to unauthorized organizations. In particular, criminal gangs were using fake base stations to set up their own GSM cell towers with very high signal strength. So nearby users' cell phones are quite likely to attach to them. Additionally, criminal gangs have been improving the techniques of fake base stations to make them more lightweight, more portable, and uh, more mobile. At the moment, a fake base station can be well accommodated by a small backpack. Technically, a fake base station is made up of three components, a GSM wireless transceiver, an engineering laptop, and uh, an engineering cell phone. Of course, the wireless transceiver is a core component. It can simulate many functions of a legitimate GSM base station. The engineering laptop controls the wireless transceiver by tuning its radio frequency, adjusting its signal strength, setting its identifier, and most importantly, forging the sender's phone number. So in the 
the two victims, this is why the two victims in the two stories, they receive forward messages from seemingly authoritative person numbers. Additionally, the engineering cell phone is used to search for nearby legitimate base stations and record their wireless parameters. A typical FBS attack on GSM phones works in three steps. Suppose our cell phone is currently connected to a legitimate base station at the top left. In the first step, the fake base station will send a location update message to the cell phone. And the cell phone thinks, oh, I have come to a new location. So I may have to switch my base station connection. Since now there are three new base stations available here, the major selection criteria is which base station has the highest signal strength. Definitely the fake base station has the highest signal strength, which can be even harmful to human health. So in the third step, the cell phone disconnects with the legitimate base station and sets up a new connection with the fake base station. At this point, I guess some of you may think that, oh, I'm using a 3G or 4G cell phone, so I'm immune to fake base stations. Unfortunately, this, not, this is not the truth because today's fake base stations, they can send jamming signals to GSM compatible 3G or 4G cell phones to force them to degrade to the GSM node. Note that although GSM has existed for many years, so abandoning GSM should also need many years from now on. FBS attack is not hypothetical. To date, it has been observed in the US, India, China, Russia, the UK, and so forth. In China alone, users receive billions of messages from fake base stations every year, causing economic loss of billions of dollars. As a matter of fact, there's a huge FBS industry in China. Surprisingly, an attacker with a $700 device can earn up to $1,400 in a single day. So this is much more cost effective than doing similar legal jobs. So I, <laughs> so I think uh, breaking bad is actually difficult when there are huge economic benefits. In the past few years, the China, Chinese governments have made various efforts to detect the fake base stations. The first method is called electronic fence. That is to deploy a number of cellular sensors within a specific area to detect very high signal strength. This method is very effective, but not scalable, because it requires huge infrastructure costs. To detect the fake base stations in a dynamic manner, mobile carriers often employ dedicated FBS signal detection cars to patrol along major streets. This random work method is limited in coverage also fake base stations can be easily moved away from major streets or simply shut down when approaching major streets. In addition, the governments encourage users to actively report suspicious fake base stations to them by dialing the number 12321. The problem is most users in China do not realize the existence of fake base stations at all, so making this method almost useless. In academia, there have been several preliminary technologies being proposed to solve this problem. For example, by developing client-side tools. The question is, do they really work in large-scale practice? In order to understand and counterattack fake base stations at a scale in the wild, we deployed a real-world system called FBS Radar. To get a large user base for our system, we utilized a very popular mobile app in China called Baidu Phone Guard. We invited the Baidu Phone Guard users to opt in to our system. Then, whenever a suspicious message arrived at their cell phone, the text message and its metadata, 
as well as the information about the recently connected base stations and nearby Wi-Fi access points are all reported to our cloud. Here, we define a message to be suspicious when the sender's number is not in the recipient's contact list or the sender's phone number is an authoritative number. Using the crowdsourced data from nearly 100 million users, we comprehensively explored a variety of detection methods, and finally, we found the five methods to be very effective. First, through signal strength examination, we find 0.23% of the user reported suspicious messages are associated with unreasonably high signal strength. But this method is very conservative because most cell phones affected by the FBS, they perceive reasonable signal strength. Second, by BSID syntax checking, we find that 0.15% of suspicious messages were sent by base stations with syntactically invalid IDs. This method is very simple and is very limited because most FBS operators are not so stupid in setting BSIDs. <laughs> Third, by message content mining using a bag of words SVM classifier, we find 0.16% of suspicious messages came from authoritative phone numbers and were determined to contain fraud text content. Obviously, such base stations are using spoofed phone numbers. This machine learning method, however, bears two shortcomings. First, it is computation intensive. Second, it needs to analyze the message content so it violates the user privacy. Our fourth and the most effective method is called BS Wi-Fi location analysis. For every message, first, we map the user's currently connected base station's ID to a BS location. Note that every legitimate BS ID is associated with a fixed location. And second, we figure out the user's location based on its wi nearby Wi-Fi access points. Then, by comparing the two locations, they should be consistent or very near. But in fact, there's a huge gap between fake and uh, legitimate base stations. Therefore, we find 4.1% uh, of suspicious messages were sent by base stations that were not in their correct geolocation. That is, they were spoofing the ID of a legitimate but a distant base station. This is the most effective method among all the five. At this point, uh, some people may have a doubt like, uh, if I am an attacker, can I avoid your most effective detection by simply counterfeiting a nearby BSID? My answer is yes, you can. But then, in this case, the cell phone will maintain its current connection rather than switch over to your fake base station. So it's ineffective. The cell phone may think my location doesn't change a lot, so I needn't switch to a new base station. Although the fourth method is the most effective, it doesn't work when the Wi-Fi location information is not available. This is why we use the fifth method to complement the fourth method. It is called BS handover speed estimation. And this is why in every message, we request the user to report three consecutive base stations. Using this information, we can estimate the maximum the average and the minimum BS handover speed. Clearly, the BS handover speed shouldn't exceed certain thresholds, but there are a number of thresholds. So to avoid false positives, we use the most conservative thresholds and find that at least 0.39% of suspicious messages come from fake base stations. So in total, we detect that at least 4.9% of suspicious messages should have come from fake base stations, and the false positive rate is only 0.05, according to our user feedback. And our another important finding is that the third set by message content mining is almost 
you almost completely covered by the other four sets. So we conclude that there is no need to collect the text content of users' messages. Besides detecting fake base stations, we also help China's police officers arrest FBS operators. To achieve this goal, we need to locate fake base stations. In particular, we want to understand which fake base stations are in fact the same one. According to our experience, this task is very challenging because fake base stations frequently move and change their IDs. To this end, we took both temporal and spatial locality into account. Only those FBS messages that satisfy three conditions simultaneously can be attributed to one fake base station. The three conditions are using the same BSID, happening in the same time window, and located in the same spatial cluster. Now, the key problem is reduced to how large the time window should be. Truth be told, we have not figured out any adaptive method to determine the best time window. Instead, we take an empirical approach and find that 14 seconds should be a good choice. Then the median location error is only 11 meters. And although the average location error, 149 meters, looks a bit large, it is sufficient for the police officers to track fake base stations. To, to benefit the whole community, we visualize the real-time locations of fake base stations through a public URL. In this video, you can see that at any time point, there are at least hundreds, tens to hundreds of active fake base stations they are working around. And if you need the background data, write me an email. I will tell you how to access the real-time data. Finally, we summarize our contributions in the work as threefold. First, we evaluated five different methods for detecting fake base stations and find they can be precisely identified without sacrificing user privacy. Second, we present a reasonable method for locating fake base stations with an acceptable accuracy. Finally, our FBS reader system is currently in use by nearly 100 million people. And it has helped the police officers arrest numerous FBS operators every month. So that's all for my talk. Thank you for your attention.